Welcome back to Ice Wolves Insider. We're joined now by uh, Ice Wolves followers Kevin Radloff, Daniel Fink, and Keith Kratchmer for From the Stands. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the program. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. All right. So the team uh, finds itself in uh, first place in, in the Bauer Conference as we speak. And uh, a lot of reasons for that success, but a lot of people also looking to the uh, top line of uh, Doug Lyndon Smith, to Mark Andre Cray, and Travis Egg in terms of the top scoring line anyway. Uh, are you guys surprised at uh, just how this line seems to be uh, tearing up, especially recently? I'll start with you there, Daniel. Well, they were in a bit of a slump for a little while, and they had to break out of it eventually. And I <laughs> they really broke out of it against Battleford. 16 points, I think it was, between the line. 13 between them against uh, Notre Dame. So they're on a roll. Hopefully against Nippon, they can keep it going and carry some of that momentum into Melford. Yeah. Kevin, your thoughts? Yeah. A anytime you can total 30 points in two games between one, one line is... It's pretty substantial. Either way you cut it, like that's a that's a big deal right now, and it's nice to spread the spread it down towards the other lines here shortly and see if the other guys can pick up too. But not that they're not scoring. It's just these guys are doing a lot of it, so yeah, it's uh, definitely welcome. Yeah, Keith, your thoughts on the play of the top line? Well, I, I knew they would be in the top uh, top of the the league or close to the top of the league, but I'm su pleasantly surprised at how many points they do have and that they are. What, two, three, four in the league? Or I think it's like three, one, three, four, that, something yeah, like that. One, two, three. Is it one, really? two, three? Yeah. yeah. Well, that's, that's, just, uh, you know, that's just an unbelievable uh, standing for that. But I, I think why, uh, one thing, too, is their second line really contributes that, mm. too. You can't, you can't throw out people against just the one line. You've got to cover two lines. So, so that giving them some protection lot. almost. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Good point. So, guys, obviously the team has uh, brought in a couple of uh, new blue liners. Well, one of them is not so new in Robert Monfort. I also made a trade for uh, Taylor Desaire. It seems that there was an attempt to uh, add size to the lineup. Uh, what do you guys think of these uh, moves, uh, what you've seen so far? I'll start with you there, Keith. Uh, well, I, I've just seen uh, Desaire just the one game on, uh, when was it, Saturday. I, I didn't really notice him that much. I, I think being new, it's probably just getting his legs and, and into shape and getting used to the team. Uh, Monfor, a couple of games, uh, I think he's still in adjustment there as well. Uh, our de our defense the, the game we played against Melfort uh, I thought our whole defensive was you know a bit uh, lax at times I don't know if that was the back checking as well but hopefully that they'll be able to click as soon as they get the experience and working with their guys and I, I think they'll be really be good additions yeah they really help Kevin obviously this team has uh, a lot of uh, gritty blue liners uh, seem to be a little on the on the, on the smaller stature size uh, do you agree with this move to to bring in a couple of big bodies here. Yeah, I think as the season wears on, smaller guys really do have a tougher time keeping up when you hit January, February. It's nice to get some bigger boys that can throw the weight around. Um, Monfort is going to get some pims, which is, you know, it's not a bad thing. You guys got to do that sometimes. Um, I like to sit, well, uh, like, like he said, he didn't notice him. That was probably the best thing he could have said. First right. game as an ice wolf and he, he didn't notice him on the ice. It's right. probably a good thing that he was just kind of doing his job quietly and, and, uh, no, I, I, like, I like the size addition, it's good. Yeah. Daniel, your thoughts on these moves? Well, like Keith said, it seems like uh, Robert Monfort is going through a bit of an adjustment phase here. He's had a tough couple first games. I don't think we've seen everything from Robert Monfort, though. He's got a lot of room to grow. Like, uh, I, I wasn't here, but a lot of people have been saying when he came in last season, he got better as the season went on, and I'm expecting that from him as well. And Taylor Desaire, we didn't notice him too much. But there was a couple plays where he took the puck, rushed it up from his own end, took it all the way down into the opposing zone, and that's a great skill to have for these blue liners, and that's another addition to an already pretty sick blue line. All right, uh, still with the top line, Travis Egham uh, had a couple of huge outings recently. Now he's back to basically almost a goal a game pace. How long do you think this guy's going to be able to keep up this pace of scoring almost a goal a game? I start with you. Oh, okay. I think as long as uh, Jose Batista. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nobody thought he'd go as far as he did, and he was still doing very well at the end, and I, I don't see any reason why he can carry on. Hmm. It's As long as he has uh, two good players with him, I, I think it'll definitely carry on right to the end. Kevin, your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, you know, he started out at the start of the year just like Wildfire also and kind of just tapered away a bit, got a, maybe five or six goals below the point goal per game, and after uh, after this last few couple sprees, he really picked her back up. And... Uh, Having Curry on his wing is never going to, or on, on his line, yeah. feeding him those passes he gets there are pretty remarkable too, so it's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Daniel, your thoughts on uh, 
Egan's well, play. When you score half of your goals into a completely empty net because everybody's paying attention to Doug Linden, Smith, and Mark Andre Carey, you're going to put a lot of goals in. And when you score four in one game, you're going to get back to that goal game pace. When they moved Logan Haroff onto the top line and took Travis Egan down to the second line, it, it, it never really seemed to work. Haroff and Linden Smith, they, they never really seemed to fully mesh. But when they brought Egan back on, those guys just really click. And I was talking to Bob earlier about this. Is he just loves the chemistry that those guys have found. And now the second line's found that chemistry. Logan Haroff's hot right now with Justin Ducharme and Phil Cleish. The third line's working really well. I mean, when you have a third line that's Aaron Enns, Taylor Pillar, and Nolan Shushot, you, you've got an incredibly deep team that's got great chemistry. These guys are going to go a long way. All right. Yeah, almost unfair, the, the depth that they've got on this team right now. <laughs> Okay, let's uh, also talk about the uh, the roster cutdown deadline, December first coming up here. Uh, Bob was just saying uh, earlier this evening that uh, he doesn't foresee the team keeping 10, 20 year olds, as some people thought that he might do. Uh, he says he's going to get down to nine, 20 year olds in, in pretty short order, and I'm assuming uh, probably around uh, 23 guys on the roster. I think they're at about 24 right now. Uh, your guys' thoughts on that? Uh, do you think he could have made a go of it in terms of uh, hanging on to, uh, to 10, 20-year-olds uh, long-term or at least uh, over the next several weeks, or do you think this is a, a good move? I'll start with you there, Keith. Uh, well, I, I don't think that, that would work out very well. I think other teams have tried, and it just seems to cr create a lot of chaos. And, and then you, if you have to rotate people or else you have to sit one guy out for an extreme length of time, I, I just don't think that's good for the team, uh, team morale or you know, team cohesiveness. So I, I, I think it would be best to pare it down. Mm -hmm. Kevin? I just don't see a point in keeping an extra 20 year old if you can get an 18 or 19 year old doing the same job. Hmm. Um, Why well, max that out? Maybe the keeper options open for January 10th if something happens in that regard and you have to roll 10 then. You know, maybe if hmm. you pick up a guy that you just can't pass on, but right now if you've got an 18 year old that can do a fourth line or third line grinder the same job, uh, I'd rather see the 18 year old getting a step up and getting a shot. Hmm. Daniel, your thoughts on that whole uh, 20 old situation? Well, we were talking earlier about it, you and I, that you could try and swing different ways to get them into the lineup, take different guys out on different nights. But when it comes down to it, you're just not being fair to one of the guys. One, one of these 20-year-olds has given this league or this team years of his hockey playing, and now you've got to sit him out for, I guess, three games it's at now for Richard Cameron. Somebody's got to move so they can get more ice time, get into play. This is their last season, at least at this level last season to show people what they've got and they need that opportunity. All right. Ala Taylor Greenbank heading out to the East Coast and getting a shot at getting full ice time there and I think he has so you know works out I'm sure. All right well gentlemen uh, thanks for being on the program tonight and uh, yeah look forward to a great week of hockey coming up. Any final thoughts on I guess this upcoming road trip the SJHL showcase and uh, of course the road trip in Nippon Melford. Uh, what are you guys looking for uh, in this uh, road trip here? I think it'll be a continuation as where they're, they're leaving off. Um, I think they'll do well in the showcase and uh, I think they'll, they'll impress a lot of the, the scouts or the people that are watching for sure. Kevin? I'd like to see him really kill Nippon. Nippon's weak right now. I'd like to see him just stomp on him. <laughs> and uh, I'd like to see him try to solve Corsi and Melfort. We have, we have a tough time in Melfort and Corsi <laughs> bit us hard here. So I'd like to see us get, get some back and hopefully Notre Dame's still feeling the pinch on that win this weekend. and. We can roll them in, uh, in Weyburn too, so it'll be nice. All right, Kevin the Merciful, that's good. <laughs> Daniel, your thoughts on this upcoming week? Well, I think it's also important that they beat on the Hawks. The last time they were in the cage, they lost 3-1. They didn't play especially well. It was a bad way to start a road trip. They need to get this one started off right with a big win in Nippowin and carry that momentum into Melfort. All right, guys, thanks again for doing this. Okay, no thanks, Kevin. All right, if you're just joining us, this is Ice Wolves Insider. And we've been joined by Ice Wolves followers Keith Crasher, Kevin Radloff, and Daniel Fink. But from the stands, we'll be right back to wrap things up. Well, that's all the time we have for this evening's edition of Ice Wolves Insider. I want to thank our special guests this evening, Ice Wolves head coach Bob Beatty, as well as Ice Wolves players Robert Monfort and Zane Morin. And of course, our fans at our usual From the Stand segment, Keith Cratchmer, Kevin Radloff, and Daniel Fink. Before we go, just a quick programming note. We will not have a show next week. Our next broadcast will be Tuesday, December 14th. We'll see you then.